Thank you. Hi. Thanks, everybody. Um, so my name is, like you mentioned, Henning von See. Um, I'm working for Google's Android Automotive team here in Munich. Um, the reason why you might not have heard of us is because um, our team formed only recently, and um, our initial launch with our launch partners is still some time ahead. But that's not why I want to talk to you, but because I want to tell you more about what's coming. Um, so the talk today is about Android Automotive um, and why it's special, about what is different between Android on a phone and Android in the automotive use case. Um, and by that, I don't mean only technical specialities about APKs, activities, and such, but um, also about how a car is special when it comes to sensors or direct distraction when you compare it to a phone. So Android has been going a long way since it has been started as a phone-based operating system. Not only does it now power tablets, watches, and TVs, also VR devices, but also it will operate on vehicles in the future. With our newest edition, uh, Android delivers a unified ecosystem for nearly all the devices you use every day, running all the apps you favor on your smartphone. While you might already know about Android Auto, um, which is a service where you can attach your phone to your normal car and run Google Maps or Waze or whatever on your car display, this is not what I want to talk to you about today. Today I want to talk to you about Android Automotive, which is running an Android operating system directly in the infotainment unit of those cars. Obviously, you can still attach your, your phone to play some Bluetooth media or to, I don't know, make a call, but um, your apps will still be running even when you disattach your phone and even leave it at home. So let's take a look where we are in the automotive world today. Right now, the automotive world consists of a high number of different ecosystems. So as a developer with an app, say, like Spotify, you would have to cherry pick which vehicles you want to support, get a, court, a team to look at the SDK documentation of that particular model or model year, uh, you, or vehicle make. Um, you have to port your existing code, if such exists, to support um, working inside the bounds of the software development kit and you would have to have a debugging environment for every implementation to know it's working, and so on. So creating innovation in that space is really, really difficult. Because with apps and services, it's pretty tough if you have to talk to every OEM or you have to adapt your app for every ecosystem, especially if you have only limited resources, if you're, say, for example, a freelance developer. So, what does Android do differently to this ecosystem? Is it just another ecosystem? No. First of all, it will provide one ecosystem for all developers, which they can use to build apps for different brands, for different cars, and different models of those brands. Um, additionally, that means modifying already existing Android app for your phone is quite technically quite, uh, quite easy to get it running on a car. So when I'm saying the developer who who do, I, who do I mean by this developer? Do I mean like, like it currently is, like the OEMs building cars? No, it's, it's basically everyone sitting here. Or at least it could be everyone sitting here. I know not everybody is an Android developer, but nowadays it's quite easy to build an Android app. And that also applies for cars. So how will the future look like with Android Automotive? Of course, Android, as you know it, is an open source platform. So right now, everybody could just use it and put everything that comes on top without asking Google about anything. Um, additionally, Google also, or will also offer Google services, which you might know from your phone, um, to provide services at the Google Play Store or to make it possible to install third-party apps or even find them. Also, Backend Restore is an essential point of an essential service to make sure that you um, can, can get your data from one car to another without much hassle, so that you can 
I don't know, put some settings in your app and when you get in another car, maybe even from, uh, from a different brand, you, you, get those two set, you get those same settings back. We will also offer the Google Assistant to make it more easy to control vehicle functions by voice. So for example, you can turn on the heater by just saying, make it warmer car. I don't know. Um, and obviously, Google Maps comes on top of that because we want to, to offer you a smooth, seamless experience, like a navigation experience. You can already see on your phones and the car as well. That means not only the online, but also for offline use cases. But last but not least, probably the most important point for, for you, like how can we, what can we do with that? Um, Android will provide app developers to, pre, to um, app developers the possibility to create apps with a driver distraction free UI because that's the main difference between normal Android apps and Android apps for a car. You have to be driver distraction safe. And that's why Android is now coming with the UX restriction engine to help you ease that process. So as I've told you, there's this distraction engine which is quite important as there might be legal reasons or other reasons why you can't use the app on, on your car not the same way how you're using it in a, on your phone. Um, so what do I mean by a driver distraction for user experience and how can you as a developer utilize that service from Android to build a restriction safe app? Um, to give you some background on why and how we are actually doing that, um, first of all, building apps is like I mentioned, quite easy because it's similar to building an app for phone but obviously it's not 100% the same. Um, particularly, there are some challenges when it comes to safety and so on. Therefore, Google has a dedicated user experience team that will make sure that there are guidelines how to build a safe app. Um, technically looking, we also have created the user experience restriction engine, um, which is a part of Android um, that allows the car OEM to define which state the car is in currently. Um, so, for example, if your car is parked somewhere, if it's idling because you're waiting at a traffic sign, um, or if it's driving. Um, this service is a point of truth for every app to know what's going on in the car. And you as an app developer don't have to care much, care much about the details because that's handled by the OEM who will configure that service and um, all the data is derived from sensor input coming from the car. As you can see, this is an app which is not 100% um, driver distraction safe because the settings app of this app has not been optimized for a driving use case. So what the restriction engine will, will do is that it will prevent the user to access, to even access that activity if, uh, if he wants to do that while driving. Of course, there are also, li also other limitations which might only restrict which content is allowed to be shown um, only partially. First, for example, it might not be safe to show the full sentence of a, or like to show the first uh, chapter of a book on your screen, but rather you would like to limit that to a certain number of letters. Um, it might not be safe to type SMS while you're driving, so we might not allow you to show a, a keyboard. And it's also probably not safe to watch a YouTube video when you're driving 250 on the autobahn, so we will not allow you to show video. Um, there are a lot of different restrictions as well, which you as a developer can easily utilize, and I don't want to go into too much detail now. Um, so obviously, safety is a big concern. Um, therefore, we want to make it easier for app developers to develop an actual driver distraction safe app. And how can we achieve that? Um, first of all, there are two ways, basically two ways how you can build an app. The first way is to, you build it together with a platform. If you're an OEM, um, you know that from your phone. It's, for example, a calculator app. It's a settings app. It can access hidden APIs for a reason, but it can mostly only be updated if you update the operating system as well. So that's probably not what you are aiming for as a developer if you're not working together with an OEM. But option two is what applies to most developer. It means um, that you build against the public SDK and you build apps with external dependencies, say Spotify or Google Maps or whatever, and those apps can be updated and uploaded via the Play Store. 
um, to, to actually make the process easier to create such apps, we have created Jetpack. You might know it as the support library. Some of you might have known it. Um, small disclaimer, Jetpack is still in alpha, so some of the things I'm telling you later are not, may, might, be not, might be up to change in the future. Um, and why I am telling you this is because um, the Jetpack library also has components for the car UI. So it will give you certain components that you can easily use as a developer to create a distraction safe user experience um, by just putting together those components. It's obviously not an exhaustive list, but rather it's a quick summary upon what, um, like what's out there, the most important stuff. Um, yeah, if you have any questions afterwards, we couldn't go into details there. Um, themes. Um, you might know it from your, when you develop a phone app, you can just apply a theme by editing the themes XML somewhere. Um, and then, for example, you change a color, and that color does change in, your, in, your whole, in all the activities in your app, if you do it right in the beginning. Um, and that also applies to components coming from the Jetpack library. So if you're utilizing some of the components I show later, you can just change a list, uh, change a, a color, and will also change in these lists. Additionally, Jetpack also supports day-night mode, so that you don't have to be aware in which case, uh, in which, in which state the car is currently in. So if you're driving into the tunnel, the UI might change automatically. Second, the probably most important thing for any app, a list, because most of apps have lists. Um, here you can see a page list view, um, which allows the user to scroll without using complex gestures. As you can see, um, the buttons and the scroll bar on the left is much larger, larger than it usually is. Additionally, one tap on the button scrolls one page at a time, and the first item is always completely visible. Um, yeah, not going too much into details here. Um, all that is obviously based on our research of our user experience team um, about the best practices they've designed for a list and how it should look like in an automotive context. Uh, Alpha Jump. Alpha Jump is adding to the previously mentioned list. It um, will give you the way to search an alphabetically ordered list in an easy way. Say, for example, you have a contact list you want to search, and you are searching for a name starting with H maybe, um, then you can just open that view and click on, on the letter H, and the list will scroll to the first name in this contact list with the letter H. So it makes it easy to search through a list while driving. Dialogues. Dialogues are also very important um, because they give you um, a way to easily and destruction safe interact with the, with the given views. Um, what you can see here is um, the car alert dialog. We will also provide a car list dialog. Um, both are trimmed down regular dialogs, so you might know them if you're an Android developer from Android dialogs. Um, they allow no complex interaction, and um, for example, this one only allows a simple yes, no. And um, as you can see, the, um, the letters are quite bigger, and also we have larger tab targets to support um, to support a more like glitchy way of tapping those buttons. Speed bumps, I'm calling them here UI tem timeouts. Um, they, they achieve, so what is actually the problem here is, because um, if you have, even if you have a driver distraction safe user interface, you don't want the user to extensively click all the different buttons on the screen while not, show, while not um, watching the street in front of him. So. Um, you can use this to, or utilize this to make sure that after a certain amount of interactions, um, the user is forced to look back on the street because he can't interact with the screen anymore. This could also be, this could either be a partial or a full lockout of the application. Um, you as an app developer, you just have to wrap your views in a special view, which is um, providing safety monitoring so you don't have to care about what the restriction engine is actually doing here. You just wrap your views, and then this speed bump is coming up and is showing the driver, hey, you're doing too much in this application, eyes back on the road, and you're fine. Okay. 
Um, now, after, you've all, after you've seen all the components, I will show you some insights about um, how you can actually test it because um, it's quite complicated to emulate a car, as some of you might imagine. Um, but our aim for that is, as I show in the next slide, um, that you can develop all that in your laptop. Um, the reason why the emulator is very important, not just for any third party developer, but also for OEMs and Google, is because hardware, car hardware, is usually quite space consuming. It's scarce and it's very expensive. So you can't expect every third party to buy every car, or every model of that car in the market. So it's much easier to just test with an image in the emulator. Um, those images can also be provided by OEMs themselves if they want to go through the hassle to make something more custom and you're working for, let's say, a company working together with them. Um, yeah, so you're fine there as well. Um, basically what you can do is you have the same workflow as you develop a smartphone app. You can use Android Studio to build your apps um, as you used to. Then you can use the normal emulator to start that app, but this emulator has some car-specific hooks um, which we will extend in the future. Those hooks can be used to, um, to let's say, emulate certain vehicle um, like interactions. So for example, you could uh, set the speed of the vehicle to see how, that, uh, how your application reacts to that. It's also uh, an interface where you can query and set those um, parameters by, for example, a Python script. So it's quite easy to like, emulate your car use case you want to test. Okay, so why are we doing that? Um, our vision for that is, as a developer, you should be able to easily understand, develop and test Android apps for Android Automotive, for any Android Automotive system on your laptop using Android Studio. No cars or special hardware needed. Okay, thank you very much.